ओके हाय गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल एंड माय वॉइस इज आल्सो क्लियर नाउ एज वेल एज माय वीडियो इज क्लियर जस्ट गिव मी अ क्विक कंफर्मेशन इन द चैट ऑल द फोक्स हु आर देयर इन द चैट अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू एवरीवन प्लीज लेट मी नो इफ यू गाइस कैन सी मी माय वॉइस इज क्लियर एवरीवन इन द चैट ओके राइट सो यप we are we are on time and as we promised uh, everything is fine today uh, we fixed up the notion doc as well so before we start off with the learning and we call up uh, ali to take the whole session a uh, first things just to explain of what things are going to be covered and the main question that you guys are asking that is uh, how to get swags and what all things are going to be the criteria right so for that whole thing i'm just here to basically help you out with the initial things of uh you can say what things you have to do here right so the first important thing is to let me just share my screen i hope uh, let me just do that uh da, 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 da. yep give me a minute meanwhile if you guys can just go and introduce yourself uh, okay so now i hope my screen is visible to everyone please let me know in the chat real quick just going to the last frame yep okay everyone in the chat my screen is visible great thank you thank you for that confirmation so now there are a few links if you can see this uh, thing right here right we have just uh, put a one doc so please go and bookmark this document right this is for your own reference all the things that is required for you to complete the program get the certification from postman not as well as let's upgrade but also from postman official certification and a badge of completion as well as postman exclusive swags you guys are required to follow the documentation right so i'm just going to take you through a quick tour of documentation which again ali will explain and we'll build that documentation over and over the whole session but uh, before we go there let me just make some changes yes yeah, so i fix the date right now the date should be 27th there so just to show you what is there so this is how the document should look like take uh, keep this link handy bookmark it uh, mail it to your friend send it on whatsapp do anything with it what you want so this is basically the qr code to register for the postman now there are a few steps again everything again ali will explain in detail but just in case you want to get started and while ali is conversation you can have this whole setup the first thing important thing that you have to do is go on this platform and register as a student i explained this yesterday but again the link to register is right here right and it is also there in the description so for your convenience i am going to just spam it a few times into the chat let me just copy paste so this yeah so it's already there in the chat you have to use that particular link only to register to make sure that you are getting the certification in collaboration with let's upgrade on the swags also right so the ration has to go from that link only now once you do that and then you have the whole setup which again ali will take you the the whole path step by step but for the very first important thing is to register here as a student on postman academy because this is where in that academy where we are going to solve the whole you can say expert program along with ali right and apart from that all the links that you have are mentioned in the description if you go on this youtube link if you just go down below so if you want to join our ambassador program you can join it here if you want this is again the link to the doc this notion doc it will have everything see and yes a very important thing before we start today's lecture we will have a social media challenge that is basically you have to tweet about what you learned so if you open this you are going to see this the challenge right what you have to do is whatever you have learned in day 1 that is today you have to tweet about it and tag ali Uh, Ali Mustafa, you have to tag Postman, you have to tag Let's Upgrade, and a hashtag with Postman Student, and we will select twenty best post out of those, and those people will win. You can say Postman swags again, what swags and everything. Ali will show you the demo, how they look, and what all stuff is there. But again, twenty people, the best post will win this swag kits, and those will be delivered to you within thirty or forty-five days at max. 
but again this challenge ends at 3 pm so the first you can say first first 20 or the best 20 before this time if you are posting it on twitter and this is today's twitter i am going to highlight this make sure that it is a twitter post only tomorrow we'll have a linkedin challenge but today it's a twitter challenge again i'm going to close this for now and that is how you will earn swags tomorrow again you'll have the chance to uh your chance to earn better swags as well but today if you want to earn swags make sure that you're getting this so two important steps uh first of all register in, register into postman uh, student academy this is right here again the links are there in the description as well as the chat and then the second thing that you guys need to do is uh, follow the program and tweet about it tag postman tag postman student and tag ali and let's upgrade and yeah uh yes debajit just 20 because those are very very exclusive swags if you need more swags we can join back to in the next month while we'll do another program again in the next month and then you can get more swags again since these are very exclusive swags which are shipped directly from postman to you there are limited quantities only okay so you you can be one of those people who win this okay so with that let me just stop my screen okay yes i hope all the all the doubts are clear any doubts you guys are having we can start off with the session it's already six minutes i've taken yes yes don't worry don't worry uh akhil we will explain the whole thing today again uh all those people who are asking the twitter handles and everything you can check the notion document that is pinned up in the live chat you can every all the details are here there in that document again do not worry we will explain everything during the session as well okay so please focus on the session while it is being started we'll call up ali in a moment just give me a sec hello everyone my name is ali mustafa and today we are going to learn about APIs. I hope I am audible. Let's give me a hi in the chat and see if you folks are able to hear me. Quick, 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 uh, give me a hi in the chat. Welcome, welcome everyone. Um, I see so many people here live, uh, which is great. Give me a hi in the chat, folks. Hello, 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 Avinash. Hello, everyone. Awesome. By the way, uh, I am from Mumbai. Where are you folks from? So till the time others are joining in, I would love to know where you folks are joining from um, so that we know each other better, right? You know, it's just one way communication. I'm talking, you're listening. I don't want in that way. Let's interact together and, uh, you know, participate in this workshop both the ways. Oh, uh, from Mumbai. I'm also from Mumbai. Delhi, that's good. Um, I see Patna. That's amazing. Kolkata. Cool, cool, cool um so many amazing cities you folks are from um so without wasting much time let's get started uh i'll quickly share my screen let me quickly go ahead and share my screen i hope you folks are able to see my slides um and let's go here and show you the notion talk so this document you might have already seen it is pinned in the description and it will be pinned in the youtube chat as well um, I'll be sharing the link here in the chat as well for you folks to see. Um, so yeah, um, let's go ahead and start with the program. Now, before that, um, ensure that you all are on this document because it is very, very important. Um, and we are going to register ourselves first before we start with the presentation, right? So registering yourself is very, very important for the certification. Uh, by the way, this is EPF Fundamentals Workshop from Let's Upgrade in partnership with Postman. And I'm Ali Mustafa. I'll talk about myself, uh, you know, in a little bit. But before that, let's uh, get you registered. Um, so how do you do that, right? Uh, because we all want certificates, right? At the end of the day, uh, that's what we are here for. Let's be real. <laughs> um, oh, someone says they are here for learning. Oh, yeah, that's good um but we all know definitely you know we are here for learning and obviously the end result is the certification um so postman is providing a free certification for all of you uh, and for that you'll have to register into the postman system uh, to be able to award your certificate um so let's go ahead and complete the registration first and then i'll come back to the slides and start from the scratch um so i've pasted this link in the chat if you're not received it yet please go ahead 
um and uh, you know spam the chat i'll uh, you know add their spam it and also pin it okay uh, by the way this notion talk is like everything you will need to know for both the days you can see we are starting here for day one from registering the program uh, and then this is where we are and then this is day two where you will meet tomorrow you can also connect with me on these platforms and we are also running a social challenge which i'll talk about in a moment um but yeah apart from that uh, everything else is there there's a discord server where you can seek help awesome um so let's get started uh, please go ahead and click here to register as a student uh you can go to how to register section and inside that click here to register yourself as a student uh, this is you registering into the postman system uh, don't worry if you're not a student you can still go ahead and register uh, this is the standard registration process so let's go ahead and register ourselves so i'll go ahead write my name um last name um email obviously i'll use my work email or uh, you can use your personal email that's absolutely fine a uh, country of residence i hope everyone is from india but last time we had some folks from africa and some folks uh you know from different regions uh, of the world uh, so yes you feel free to select your country we don't have any restriction on that um so yeah select your country um and then if you are a student you can select that you're studying in a university if not if you're a professional you can select no add your company name and then move forward uh but in our case a majority of you are students so let's select yes uh, let's go there and write the full name of our university i studied from ap Shah institute of technology uh, you folks can obviously write yours um oh my website url i can just google apps it and write it or if you remember it nothing better than that i actually remember it because i used it a lot um so yeah uh, you can just google your college website if you don't remember it uh then course and program obviously whatever you're studying i was studying information technology so like it I already graduated, so I'm going to obviously add 2020 as my year of graduation. If you're graduating next year at 2025, or if uh, you know, if you feel you might not be able to graduate right away, then you can use a plus one and add 2026. Uh, yeah, that was a lame joke, but yeah, uh, you know, add your expected year of graduation. Um, so yeah, do that here. Um, so I graduated in 2020. And then how did you learn about this program? So you learn about this program from a workshop. So select that. Um, and if you would like to kind of hear us, uh, you know, from a newsletter, which is quite informative, I, I would say. So you can check this box and subscribe to it. Or else you can um, obviously, you know, uncheck it if you don't want to receive emails from us. Uh, but we promise we don't spam. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then you can agree to the privacy policy. We have obviously all these data which you're sharing with us. We have a very strong privacy policy, which you can go about and read here, um, give it a read here, um, and then hit submit. Uh, so yeah, uh, once you're done, uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat, okay? I'll wait for everyone to finish in the chat and then move forward, okay? Uh, so again, repeating the steps for someone who joined just right now. We went here, um, we went to how to register section. And inside that uh, step number one is to register yourself as a student. We clicked here, opened a form, um, and went ahead and filled it out with all our details, right? So we started with first name, last name, email, and you know, country of residence, university URL. Um, I cannot give you all these details, right? Because it is very different for all of you. Um, say, I don't know which college you went to. So definitely fill that up quickly here so that I can see it, right? Uh, once you're done, hit the submit button um, and let's wait for everyone to hit that. Uh, once you're done, give me a thumbs up in the chat, folks, right? Um, so yeah, once you're done, uh, you know, completing this form, give me a thumbs up so that we can move further. Awesome. Um, cool. I, I see some thumbs ups in the chat, which is amazing. Uh, by the way, once you fill it up, you will see a page like this, right? You will see a thank you page. And you can also see announcement about our postcon. Um, by the way, it's our annual conference. Feel free to register in it, right? Um, so here you can see, thank you for your interest. Once you have done, uh, obviously you will see this page. Um, and here you can, uh, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, start with the certification. 
So you are into our systems and now uh, you can go and, uh, you know, do this self-paced course. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to do it yourself. I'm here to teach you and we are going to complete the course in the next two days. Today is the day and tomorrow again, we are going to complete this, right? Um, so yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, let's see, let's see in the chat how many people have done it already. Um, okay, I can see a few folks who have already done it. Um, that is good. That is good. Um, let's uh, see. Okay, I hope no errors are getting. If you are getting any error, folks, just refresh this page. If the link is not working, you can use the direct link here um, as well. We have spammed the link in the chat again. But in case you have not got it, please, uh, you know, keep this notion. It is already there in the description. It is there in the pin chat as well. So yeah, use this notion extensively. We have created this resource specially for you folks, right? Uh, so use it throughout. Okay. Um, so I hope everyone is registered into the system and this is this thank you page, right? Now in this thank you page, you can see there's another link which is called as click here, which you can see here, right? Uh, the click here link. Uh, so this is basically Postman Academy where you have to re-register. Um, the reason for that is obviously it is uh, a completely learning management system where you can track your progress. You can do fun quizzes. Who all love quizzes, right? Every one of us loves quizzes. Um, so we are going to do fun quizzes, uh, you know, during, uh, you know, once we learn the concept, we'll go attempt the quiz and, you know, um, have some fun. Uh, so, you know, all of that. So that is where the Postman Academy comes into the place. Uh, so let's click here and it will open a new tab where we'll have to register again. Apologies for two times registering, but, you know, you have to complete this mandatory step. Click on sign up. Um, we'll go ahead and again, fill up our details. So Ali Mustafa, uh, again, last name, uh, followed by my email address. So the email address, which I use there, right? Um, you know, I have to use the same email. So I can go ahead and use the same email. Here I'm going to, uh, you know, use the same email which I used previously. Uh, so make sure that you are also, uh, you know, doing uh, the same, you're using the same email, um, which we are, uh, which we used earlier, right? Uh, institution, um, again, the one which you entered earlier, role is going to be, you know, your role as a student, obviously, most of you are student, if not selected from the drop down, uh, password, you can, you know, write a fancy password. Or else I usually use Chrome to kind of suggest me a password. And, I, and now I know obviously it has exposed my password. So I'm going to, uh, you know, add few elements to it. Uh, let me do that. Oh, okay. So let me add a password, which is easy for me to remember. Um, and let's see. Uh, no, let's, let's do this. I'll use this password and I'll change it later on so that it's easier. Anyway, it's not something which, which is very, you know, um, like sensitive, <laughs> but I'll change it. Uh, don't worry folks. Right. Um, so let's quickly do that. Uh, by the way, I have an account, so I'm not going to sign up. That's why I'm displaying my password, uh, but yeah, you can see here, uh, this is how the form looks like. Don't edit the invite code or you, you'll not be able to edit it, but don't do anything to it and click on sign up. Um, repeat. Definitely I'll repeat it again. I'll repeat it till the time you understand. Don't worry. Um, I'm not a robot, right? So you know, I'm not going to repeat thousand times, but I'm going to repeat it once again for sure. Um, so step number one, we went to Notion. We clicked here, which kind of directed us to this wonderful page where we added all our details, right? Uh, and then we hit the submit button. Once we hit that submit button, we were redirected to uh, this thank you page. Um, and then the thank you page basically redirected us to another link, which is Postman Academy. Consider Postman Academy as nothing but Udemy. You have used Udemy before, right? Or Coursera, where you do your course, save progress, move forward, right? So we are going to do this over two days. So we need something like this, which can help us, you know, to bring back and save our progress and, you know, attempt few quizzes in between, right? Um, so yeah, that's what we are doing here. So we click here and then uh, we go to 
the new tab which opens and click on sign up and quickly sign up here, right? Um, so yeah, let's quickly do that. Um, and then we are all good uh, and we can proceed next, right? So let's click on sign up and we'll proceed next. Um, and it will directly log us into the academy, right? Um, remember the password because tomorrow you need to sign in, right? So, you know, that is not going to happen. So once you're here, you can absolutely see this page, right? Uh, where you can see the course, you can click on overview and you will actually see what all, all the things which we are going to actually learn, right? A lot of things to learn. Definitely, we are going to learn about APIs, right? Uh, so let's click on this course, which is Postman API Fundamental Student Expert. And you will see the start button, uh, which we are going to click and get started. Um, so yeah, now you can actually see all the courses are locked because obviously, you know, we are, uh, all the lessons are locked because we are going to do them one by one and unlock them, right? Uh, so let's click on the start button and let's get started. Um, so yeah, I hope till here, everyone is pretty clear. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up folks. Give me a thumbs up in the chat. If you have done till here and you can see this particular page, if you have any questions, please mention in the chat. I have a lot of moderators who are going to answer it. Uh, and absolutely. I'm also here in the chat, so I'll also answer it. Right. Um, but yeah, ask questions if you have any, but I hope till here, the process has been pretty clear. Right. So the registration has been quite successful. Now it's time for us to kind of move further um, and get started with the actual course. Awesome. Uh, if you are done till here and you can see this page, give me an orange heart in the chat. Yeah. Postman orange, you know, why not? Um, you might have reserved your red heart for someone else, but you can give me an orange heart, you know, just saying. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so let's come back to our presentation and this is where we are going to learn about some basics about API, you know, first, and then we are going to get started, um, and then, you know, complete the whole course on the academy, right? Uh, so once you have registered till here, just take a chill pill, go drink some water and we are going to cover some theory. Don't sleep because I'm going to make it very, very interesting and I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to keep you busy in the chat. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, while you're here, you're here to learn about APIs. I know a lot of you might be hearing about APIs for the very first time. Don't worry at all. I'm going to teach you everything from scratch. Okay. That's why I'm here. But like, that's my job, uh, basically to teach you about APIs. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to learn about today? We'll start with APIs. We'll learn about Postman, you know, how Postman enables you to work with APIs very, very easily. Then we talk about request and responses. We'll try out things hands-on, and then we'll do some follow-up resources. We'll do some small Q and A's as well. Uh, about myself, I am Ali Mustafa. I know I've said that three times, you know, a little weird, uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, what I do, I love, uh, you know, I, I've been working at Postman since 2020. I love promoting API literacy. And that's what I've been doing at Postman, um, you know, uh, like from the very start. I've been part of the student programs team, which is responsible for basically bringing this amazing course to you folks, free of course, right? Um, and then we, I also manage student leader program where you can become a leader and promote API literacy on your campus. Uh, apart from Postman, I've been very active elsewhere in the community and I've traveled to 60 plus cities in person from 2017. Um, yeah, before the pandemic, you know, <laughs> um, but after the pandemic also, I've been traveling to different cities and different colleges, judging hackathons, you know, and delivering sessions. And I definitely hope to meet you someday in person. If you definitely meet me, you know, uh, do let me know that you attended this workshop online. And I'm very glad to, you know, meet people in real life. And that's my personality. You will kind of know that by the end of this session because I talk a lot. Um, I also have a TEDx talk if you ever feel demotivated. Um, yeah, I have a TEDx technical talk. Um, and don't mind me. I will not bore you a lot in that talk. But yeah, it's, it's fun. You can just uh, Google my name and add TEDx to it. And you will find my talk on YouTube as well. Uh, so yeah, that's about myself. I guess that's enough. Uh, I can definitely, you know, talk all day about myself, but that's not what we are here for. 
Uh, by the way, we also have some awesome giveaways. You all love this duck, right? Let me show you something. Uh, so I have this little duck here. Um, and we are going to give away some of these in the prizes, right? And it speaks. Uh, let me see if you can hear it. Um, tell me what do you hear in the chats, right? Tell me more. Yeah, I, I do hear it, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to just tease you. <laughs> but this can be yours. Uh, how? So there's a social media challenge which is running uh, for both the days. We'll talk about this. Uh, you know, obviously, we'll talk about this. But if you go to Notion, uh, if you come down a little bit before live lectures, uh, you can see the social media challenge which will end tomorrow uh, You know, at 3 p.m. So before that, you can participate in it, right? How to participate in it you can go ahead and uh, tweet about what you're learning you know i'm not telling you to tweet anything promotional i'm telling you to tweet whatever you're learning in this course go ahead uh, use these hashtags and tags um and mention us on your twitter right it is only for twitter uh, sorry folks if you don't have twitter uh, it's completely optional by the way you can participate if you want to win swags um so yeah uh, you know participate in it we also have created a small api to kind of enable you to do that uh, but yeah, I would love to see informational tweets, right? Uh, and then you can submit it via this form. Uh, there will be 20 kits awarded, which has two items in them. And some, some of them might have a duck in it, right? Um, so yeah, uh, you know, try your luck and, uh, you know, share about what you are learning. Uh, remember, uh, you know, qualifying tweets include information, right? Uh, which your followers might obviously find beneficial because they're not attending this workshop, right? They're missing out. So you're yeah, just telling them what you're learning about, right? It's a very simple thing. Um, so yeah, you can participate. It's running till tomorrow and uh, you get amazing chance to win some swags. Cool. Uh, this is me speaking at different places, you know. Um, yeah, this is me clicking safe. It, I know it's, it's cringe these days. But that was back in 2017 and that days, you know, selfies were cool. Um, but yeah, I'm now, you know, more of a boomer generation. Uh, so that's completely fine. Uh, but yeah, this is me speaking at different places. Uh, would definitely love to connect with you if you discover me speaking somewhere in your college, near your college. I definitely visit and say hi, you know. Um, so yeah. So what's the end result of this workshop? Obviously, you'll learn about APS. You'll get some amazing swags. At the same time, you will get a certification from Postmat. And you will also get a digital badge, which you can share on LinkedIn, uh, which is verifiable, by the way. And you can also add it to your resume, uh, you know, as a new skill set. Definitely, if you add more skills, you know, in, in this harsh job market, uh, you know, where everyone is fighting for a job, adding a new skill in your resume definitely helps, right? Um, so yeah, this is the end result of this workshop. If you attend both the days and do as I am doing here, right? I'm completely teaching you hands-on. See, this complete workshop is hands-on. Only little theory, which I'm going to cover today. And then everything is hands-on. Like 80% of the workshop is hands-on, right? Uh, so I definitely, you know, want you to complete this workshop with me and earn the certification. Okay. So let's get to the topic. What is an API? How many of you have been to restaurants, by the way? Um, I hope all of you have been. If not, I hope you go there soon. Uh, but I, I guess, you know, every one of us have that, have this experience where our dad or our mom or, you know, our family members have taken us to different restaurants. And what is the very first thing you do when you go to a restaurant? Uh, you don't go and start shouting, right? Uh, yeah, I see a lot of comments. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, um, so what do you do when you go to a restaurant? What is your go-to thing? Just you directly went sit somewhere or what do you do? You approach, you know, someone on the reception and be like, hey, you know, yeah, I want a seat, you know. And then, uh, you know, the person takes you and, you know, like places you on a table. Um, and then you wait for the waiter to come. Imagine you just go and sit on the table and you start shouting, hey, I want a biryani, I want a biryani, you know, what will happen? You'll not, you'll definitely not get a biryani, but you'll definitely get thrown out, right? Um, I don't, don't, uh, you know, ask me how do I know that information, but I do know that. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, you wait for the waiter to come. And then the waiter comes with a set menu, 
meaning that you cannot go to a McDonald's and order a vada pav, can you? You cannot. Why? Because McDonald's have a specific menu which, uh, you know, you will be kind of served with, right? And similarly, if you go to, uh, you know, a vegetarian restaurant, you will only have veg items in it, right? So everyone has the set menu as per their restaurant's requirement. Um, and then they kind of, you know, you choose from that menu and give it to the waiter. Now, have you ever imagined, like, I'm an overthinker, right? So I imagine a lot of things. Uh, so, you know, have you ever imagined, like, why don't you directly go and give it to the chef and not to the waiter? Like, why is this middleman doing in between, right? If you can directly go and give the order to the chef, how cool that would be, right? Um, but then, you know, obviously I got my answer is, uh, you know, you can, you don't know which chef cooks what. So, you know, if you go and give to the wrong chef, hygiene gets compromised, everyone is going to the kitchen. So, you know, a lot of problems, right? If uh, customers start watching, walking into the kitchen. Obviously, some other issues as well. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, it, it's a very hazardous thing to do. So that's why there's a waiter in between, right? And then the waiter knows what is happening on the back end, right? So the waiter kind of go, knows the chefs, he knows who is going to cook what, everything uh, is known to the waiter, right? Um, and that is the whole idea of having a waiter in between, right? That you give your order to the waiter, all the process behind the scene, abstracted from you, right? And then, uh, you know, the food comes directly onto your table. It tastes really good. And that's all you care about, right? It's hygienic, it tastes good. And then you give the money and you also give the tip to the waiter, you know, for the better service. Uh, and then you leave, right? So that is exactly how an API works. The APIs are nothing but the waiters of the internet, right? Um, so if you go by definition, APIs are uh, application programming interfaces. I, you know, emphasize on the word interfaces because, yeah, this is going to be something which we are going to touch base on a lot of times, right? So when we talk about APIs, uh, we are building very, very interactive interfaces, which, you know, the backend uh, is completely, you know, somewhere else. And the heavy lifting is done by the server, right? For example, you go to a kiosk machine on a railway station. You can go ahead and book a ticket. You don't really need to go to the counter and to book ticket. ticket. You can directly book it via a machine, which is right there. It also supports UPI payments and everything, right? If you're in Mumbai, you know how effective it is to kind of go and buy yourself a ticket. Very effective, right? Um, just go to a kiosk machine and you get a ticket in, in a minute. You go to an airport, you can get your boarding pass just via PNR, right? And your last name. So again, all of these interfaces, your watch is an interface, your mobile phone is an interface, your laptop, your devices, all the devices which you can think of are all interfaces. And you're working with these interfaces to make the customer experience better, to enable your services to work and do numerous things, right? And APIs enable that, right? Um, so that is the whole point of uh, APIs, um, you know, to do. I hope you get the point till now. Um, there's an API for literally everything. It's a cat API. If you're not a cat person, there's a dog API, right? Uh, but if you're not a cat and a dog person like me, I'm more of a crocodile person. I'll be thinking, you know, how do I become a crocodile person? <laughs> no, I don't have a crocodile pet. That's quite illegal in India. Um, but uh, I definitely, you know, when I go to Instagram, I have trained my algorithm to show me crocodile videos. And it shows me like funny crocodile videos, like, you know, the kind of videos where you can go and pat, you know, on crocodile's head and kind of videos, right? Um, so yeah, you know, my feeds are filled with that. So I'm a crocodile person. So there was no crocodile API. So I created an API which can send you funny crocodile images right so there's an api for literally everything out there if not there's an opportunity to do business you know because it's not yet explored um so absolutely there's uh, for songs there's spotify api twitter has an api that's what i'm going to use to get the winners by the way uh then we, we have facebook which has uh you know apis google we all have used google sign in so that is enabled via apis and there are tons and tons of apis for everything and anything out there right yeah, some people are relating to it, right? The Yoing guy, you fo you, go, you folks follow that, you know? Um, yeah, you know, he's still searching for that 20-foot python. Uh, I hope he finds it and I'm the one to see it on the reel, definitely. Um, yeah, funny stuff. 
So uh, I hope you got the concept of APIs as of now. Uh, but if not, this is like the very simplest explanation I can give you, right? Um. So how many of you have played with Legos? Now, if you ask me what is a Lego, you can see it on the screen, by the way. But Legos are nothing but they are individual building blocks, right? You know, and when I was a child, I guess I played with Legos a lot. Now that I've grown up, uh, you know, the Legos are very expensive. Uh, but I still play with them uh, when I'm in my office because we have some amazing Lego series there. Um, you know, it's it's fun to play with Legos. Like time passes, like, you know, but very fast. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of people in the chat saying yes, 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 yes. Yeah, obviously, we have all played with Legos. But if not, you have missed on it, buddies. Go ahead, buy a Lego for yourself and play with it. <laughs> um yeah after the workshop obviously after the workshop but um let's ex understand what is lego and you know how this concept relates to apis uh so legos are nothing but individual blocks right and each block has a functionality uh so block might uh, you know be a you can attach a block on top of something um you know it is more like it has a wheel on it it has a motor on it or it is a block which can uh which uh you know uh, which kind of adds as a front of a train or a back of a train and so on and so forth, right? So you can have multiple blocks available with you and whatever you want to build, like you can build with it. The only limit is your imagination, right? So you can go ahead and build a train. You don't love it. You can convert it into a truck. You don't love it. You can convert it into a transformer, like, you know, simple, you know, Lego human beings. You can do whatever you want to do. And the only limit is your imagination, right? Uh, so that is what, uh, you know, software version of APIs are, right? They are Legos. So you have, uh, you know, very simple one API available, and then you can plug it into another API and create multiple systems um, which are very effective in nature. Let's give you an example. How many of you have used Instagram? Uh, obviously, a lot of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we just discussed about that young guy. Um, so definitely, we all have seen Instagram. So, um, you know, when you go and you want to add a story, you go ahead and add a story. But now you need to add a GIF to story, right? So I do this, like I create a lot of reels. Um, and when I want to kind of, you know, not show them reels, I want them to tap on it. So I go and search for the tap sticker. Um, do you know that that's where does the tap sticker come from? Instagram doesn't have a repository of JS. It relies on Giphy. So Giphy gives Instagram API access to GIFs. And then Instagram is able to, you know, integrate Giphy into their own system. How effective that is, right? Giphy, which has world's largest JFs, right? You know, largest repository of JFs. And then Instagram, which is a social media site. And they both can coexist, obviously. And Instagram can use Giphy's GIFs, uh, enable users to use it, right? Um, you know, via simple API integration. So that's an example of how collaborative, uh, you know, your software becomes when you start embracing APIs, right? And not just for external purposes, also for internal APIs, right? So Instagram might have an account API. You know, if you are going to Reels, they might have Reels API and so on and so forth, which enables them to manage all of these also very, very easily, right? Um, so I hope you get my point. And, uh, you know, that's how APIs are nothing, but the software version of Lego is which you can connect with one another and work out. Awesome. Uh, so I hope APIs are pretty clear till now, right? Now, about Postman, um, yeah, you see Postman here, you see Postman here. So what is Postman and why Postman is taking so much interest in APIs? Um, well, let me give you a one simple liner. Postman is an API platform. Uh, we don't just test APIs, we build APIs, design APIs, you know, enable you to do multiple things uh, via the complete life cycle of an API. You cannot just, uh, you know, document APIs or test APIs, but you can also uh, you know, go ahead and maintain a source of thread, uh, create a repository of APIs, you know, walk around with different permission sets and do all of that collaboratively at a single place. Uh, that's Postman for you. Uh, so Postman does all of that. And today we are going to use Postman. Absolutely, we are going to use Postman. But our main use case of using Postman is going to go ahead and work with APIs using Postman, right? This session is dedicated towards teaching you APIs 
and postman is going to act as a tool to enable that so yeah that's about postman now i'll be like okay why to use postman i can use call absolutely you can use call and if you can use call you would definitely not be attending this session because you're already a pro right uh, but if you are attending this session definitely you know you you can use postman to uh, you know do and work with aps very very easily uh, but yeah there are a uh, certain drawbacks to call and that's why postman was invented in the very first place uh, and the main reason for that was uh, collaborativeness right so when you are working with call uh, you are an individual works fine uh, you know and then decoding it writing test scripts on top of that all of that is uh, you know a lot of hectic tasks uh, which can be resolved uh, and that's what postman kind of resolved uh, you know back then when uh, you know there was no api tool available which could help you to work around with apis very effectively and that's why postman was super adapted by everyone um, and it is now easy to work with apis thanks to postman uh, by the way, why should you learn about Postman? Because, you know, Postman is a tool like, you know, any other tool available, right? So why should you learn it? Uh, no, no, no. Postman is the industry standard tool when it comes to APIs. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, 95% of, 98% of Fortune 500 companies use Postman. Um, and 65% of global 2000 orgs use Postman. And definitely, I know that a lot of you might want to work with Fortune 500 companies. You know, that's your target, obviously. Uh, so, uh, you know, it is something uh, which will definitely help you if you learn about it, right? Um, if you learn something, it, it is never going to go for which, right? Um, so, yeah, companies like PayPal, Kroger, Walt Disney, they all use Postman uh, into their, uh, you know, daily life cycle for managing APIs and you can obviously read about numerous case studies. I'm not here to sell Postman, but yeah, I'm, uh, you know, talking about how you can, uh, you know, use Postman um, as a tool to work with APIs. So yeah, that's about Postman. I hope that is pretty much clear. So I'll take a water sip until then uh, you can mention me or you can use and go and participate in the Twitter challenge folks. It's going to end tomorrow at three. So yeah, participate fast, submit the form. Um, and yeah, I'll take the entries. And by the way, I'll announce the winners tomorrow in the stream, uh, which will be mentioned here. So I'll actually add the winners right below this line. Um, so yeah, if you have not participated yet, participate here and get a chance to win some awesome swags. Um, so yeah, let me take a sip of water till then you can participate in it. Awesome. That was fairly quick for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, don't worry. You can also participate later on, right? Because it is running till tomorrow. So you have plenty of time to attend the session and also participate. Uh, is this recorded? Yeah, absolutely. This is recorded uh, because it is live, um, you know, YouTube live. So it is. it will be staying on YouTube as a video. You can watch it later if my pace is fast. You can also slow it down to 0.5x. You know, I speak very slow anyway. Uh, sometimes when I get excited, I speak fast. So yeah, if my pace is faster, you can switch the speed and, you know, continue watching it. Awesome. Um, so while working with APIs, now comes the practical part, right? So this is where uh, things get interesting because we want to work with API. We just don't want to know about APIs, but we want to do practical with APIs. So, uh, you know, when you are calling an API, there are two parts of it, request and response, right? So we are going to work with both of them. Uh, we are going to create a request and then we are going to get a response. Like in the waiter example, remember, we gave all the items we wanted to the waiter. We requested the waiter and then waiter went to the back end, which is the kitchen. You know, the food was prepared by the chefs, handed over back to the waiter. And then the waiter came with the response, which is our cooked dish, right? So request response pattern is going to help us to interact with the API very, very effectively and let us know what's happening behind the scenes, right? Um, so that is basically what uh, is happening in this uh, particular use case. 
Um, so yeah, there's a request response pattern. You are a client over the network, you send an API request. And then that goes to the server um, and then the server would process it and then send you back the response and say that, okay, if your request was successfully executed, if not, and so on and so forth. So yeah, by the way, making the request has three main ingredients. The first one is a method, then address, and then the path. I will discuss all of these in very much detail. But to give you an idea, I have a very simple graphic to explain this in very, very simple format, right? Um, so this is a simple URL, uh, which you can see here. And this is like a simple Postman interface, by the way. I will get to that. Don't worry at all. But, you know, this is how it looks like. Now, on the left hand side, you will see a by default method, which is a get method, right? Uh, whenever you go to a website, and you type the website URL, hit enter, you are by default triggering a get method. Okay. Uh, so what is a method? Method is an action verb. It allows you to tell the server what exactly do you want to do. So there are four basic methods which we are going to learn about today, which will help us to grow CRUD operation. Now, can someone tell me what this CRUD means? Yes, yes, in the chat. CRUD, very simple. We have learned about it. Um, in school, obviously, I've not told you about it yet, but in school, in college, you might have learned about it, right? Not the CURD. Huh? CURD means food. I know you, you know, I love food a lot, but I'm talking about CRUD. CRUD is different than CURD. <laughs> okay. So, uh, CRUD is create, read, update, delete. C-R-U-D. Right? So, that's what we are going to do via the methods. So you can see get method is retrieve information, read, post method, send information, add information to the server, put or patch is update information, and then delete is delayed information. So we use these methods to, you know, walk around with APIs and tell the server what exactly we want to do. Remember, we are working with the REST APIs, uh, you know, for now, there are multiple types of APIs, uh, you know, partner APIs, private APIs, uh, and then uh, inside them also, there are different categories, um, you know, hardware APIs, software APIs, um, and then there are different protocols and different frameworks like GraphQL, uh, you know, REST. We are working with REST. Um, yeah, I'll, you know, cover all of that in Academy as well, but just FYI. So what are methods? Methods enable us to tell the server what we exactly want to do. They are also called as action verbs. What are the common methods? Get, retrieve information, post, add information, put patch, update information, and delete to delete information. Um, yeah, you can follow the registration process. That is very important if you're new right now, if you're joined right now, follow this process, uh, go to you know registration, um, register yourselves and make sure that you are already registered um, and then sign up on the academy like as mentioned here I've already shown you the process if not just rewind back and you will be able to see the process uh, sorry for diverting back but yeah coming back to this so four methods and then the URL now URL is also divided into different parts we start with the protocol which is the very first part like HTTP HTTPS right you know the difference of S secure yes <laughs> Uh, everyone knows that. <clears throat> and then there's the main URL, which can be also an IP address, by the way. So you can have an IP address in front of that as well. And then there is the last part, which is the path uh, where you are requesting the resource, right? Where the resource is present. Let me give you an example. Obviously, it is a little funky, right? Uh, so I'll open google.com. So google.com gives me the access to the homepage, right? But uh, I don't want to go to home page. I want to open Google Drive. So instead of typing another URL, I'm just going to do forward slash and I'm going to type drive and it will open Google Drive. You can see google.com is the main domain and then the forward slash is the path where I'm trying to locate the resource. For example, I want to go to maps. So I can go to maps. I can just add forward slash maps and it will redirect me to Google Maps. I want to go to Gmail, I can type Gmail and it will take me to Gmail. Oops, it is opening my email. I don't want to show you my inbox definitely. So I've closed the tab. But you get my point, right? So the last part is basically the path where the resource is located, right? So 
let's do this example okay okay um i want you to be very proactive right 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 okay um so you're participating in the twitter challenge you go ahead and tweet about whatever we are learning which method are you using when you hit that post button which method are you using yes 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 think about it think about it get post put patch or delete post post right why why because you're sending information to the server you're sending the tweet to the server so you're using the post method okay now you posted your tweet right now i want to see your tweet so you give me the url i click on that url which method am i calling yes yes get post post patch delete get method exactly folks thank you so much yeah guessing right okay good so we use the get method to retrieve information now let's assume that you are very rich huh? and you have that blue tick so you did a spelling mistake in the tweet now you want to edit it so you go to the tweet you edit it and you you know hit update which method are you going to use again get post put patch mm -hmm. or delete yes put and patch yes exactly put or patch i'll talk about the difference a little bit you know there's a very little difference between both the methods we'll talk about that in practicals but definitely you're going to talk about it um but yeah you are you know a little poor like me so you cannot you don't have twitter blue so what you're going to do you're going to delete the tweet and retweet it right so which method are you going to use to delete the tweet delete method right absolutely amazing folks you already grasped the concept congratulations uh you have learned about apis 20 percent awesome um so now when you are obviously using uh, you know put or patch or you know post method obviously you need to send a body right you're sending the tweet right so you need to send a body with it um and there are different types of body which you can send like form data in our case we are filling a simple form right one text field and then one button so once you add that it shoots and uh, you know very simple post requests uh, which kind of returns back your tweet which you have tweeted uh, so here you can see this is very simple json which we are going to use what is json by the way javascript object notation it's very simple key value pairs right there's a key there's a value so for example here you can see name uh, which is the key which will not change it will remain the same but the value will keep changing for different kinds of uh, you know people uh, same with email and both here right so these are keys which don't change and then the value which can keep changing um, so yeah, that's simple JSON example, which we'll use uh, while, uh, you know, adding data to our API request. Now, once you send a request, what do you receive? You receive a response back. Um, so you receive a status code. Okay. Uh, what is the status code? Okay. How many of you heard about 404? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I can say 404 humor not found like you know i'm so humorous right but a lot of people don't find my humor um maybe their humor is not there you know they don't have that humor to sustain this high level of iq <laughs> again a lame joke but you know you get my point so 404 um yes 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 okay i see 404 not found yeah exactly not found right um so 404 is a very common error which we see a lot of times which is hey, in whatever you're looking for i don't have it uh 404 so whenever you know my little brother kind of comes to me and asks me hey Paya, can you give me some money i'm like 404 and he's like yeah 400 rupees works you know <laughs> uh he doesn't get my api jokes uh but yeah 404 means not found right uh but so if you are sending a request and you get 200 meaning uh, the request was successful okay uh, so there are different families uh, 200 300 400 500 um, and that's basically the status code which tells you if it is working or if it is not working uh, so yeah uh, let's go ahead we have already done the registration process by the way but keep this bookmark folks bookmark this today tomorrow we are going to use this for both the days this is the doc which we are using right i've already shared the url you're already here okay um so yeah let's uh let's let's get started we have already registered on the academy we have already done all the registration process and we were here if you remember right or wrong right 
Um, so yeah, if you don't know how we came here, I'll repeat once again very quickly. We went here, we went to registration, clicked here, it opened this wonderful page. We filled all the details, hit submit. Once we hit submit, we were redirected to the thank you page. In the thank you page, we clicked here, that opened Postman Academy. We signed up on the academy and then we were here. Exactly like that, right? So once you sign up, you will see this start button here, uh, which now it says resume because I already clicked on start. <laughs> but you will see the start button. And once you click here, uh, your progress will get started. Uh, so you can see we have already seen this. By the way, we are going to do a little role playing. You know, role playing is fun, right? No, it is very fun. So I'm going to give you a role of a librarian. I'm going to make you a librarian for today. And I am going to be your student. Uh, so I'm going to come with books and you have to use API calls to help me. Right. So how we are going to do that? We are going to enable you to create a workspace which has all the APIs in it to help the student retrieve book, retrieve specific book, add a book, update a book, delete a book. Right. All of that we are going to do. And then we are going to take a little test of yours at the very end. By the way, everything we are going to do is a test, meaning that all of that is going to be submitted. So let's ensure that you're doing practicals with me as it is. Okay. Because we are going to do test, uh, you know, on a rolling basis. And if you are behind, then that is going to be a little bit of a problem. Okay. So let's go to the next. Uh, we have already reviewed this. Okay. Um, so we have already registered ourselves. So we have done this step. Yes, we have already done this. Let's go next. Ah, we have already talked about APIs. By the way, they have here, have, uh, you know, uh, we have a very simple line which says APIs are nothing, but it's a contract which allows one code to talk to another code, which is a very easy way of explaining what is an API. You can already see the industries where APIs are used and, you know, the survey, the latest survey, which kind of postman does every year, which you can see here as well. We'll click on next because we have already done all of this, right? So we are not going to repeat it. Ah, uh, this waiter example, right? We did that. Okay. Let's go next. Yeah. So I told you about types of API. We covered a little bit about it, like hardware APIs, software APIs, web APIs, but you can read more about them right here on this window. You can also read about the architectures I talked a little bit about, right? Because, you know, I don't want to bombard you with information like, you know, which you will not understand. So we'll definitely talk about it as, you know, as and when required, but I'm not covering hardcore theory for now. So let's go next. It's time. Two questions. Let's see who is going to answer it first. Let's start the quiz. Question number one. What is an API? Pick the best answer from one of the choices below. A file format for images, Apple's new iPhone programming language, a contract that allows code to talk to another code, a unit used for storage measurement. Give me your answer, folks. A, B, C, D in the chat. Keep it flowing. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see much activities in the chat, folks. Come on, spam it. Give me what answer do you think is the right answer? Yeah. C, C. Yes. Imagine, you know, there's a new I language, right? Um, you have to pay to name the variables. You have to pay to compile it and then pay to, you know, ship it more or less. And if you encounter bugs, you have to pay to see the bugs. Uh, crazy, you know, um, I'm not talking about Apple, the company, obviously I'm not, you know, Apple, the fruit I'm talking about. Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to get sued. Uh, so yeah, you know, funny. So a contract that allows one code to talk to another code. Let's see if that is right. Uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, what are some different types of APS? Ah, yo, you know, this is the question which we skipped, you know, and then it came in the exam. Let's see who all give me the right answer. It's a multiple choice question. So you can select multiple choices. So there's GraphQL, there's REST, there's GraphQL, there's GRPC, and then there is electric sockets. 
हाँ इलेक्ट्रिक सॉकेट सीम्स लाइक इट कुड बी एन आर्किटेक्चर और टाइप ऑफ एन एपीआई नो ओके पीपल सेइंग ए बी सी सम पीपल आल्सो से डी ओके ओके ए बी एंड सी ओके दैट्स द मेजॉरिटी सो आई विल सिलेक्ट दीज या लेट्स हिट सबमिट Oh yes, two or two hundred percent marks, folks. You know, I always got ten pointer. You know, um, yeah. Oh, I only got ten pointer once when it was online exam. Like I got hundred percent here because of all of your help. Uh, but yeah, apart from electric thought, all of them were architectures and were different types which we use. Uh, and definitely, you know, the APIs enable you to talk. Uh, you know, make it easy for talk for you to talk to other codes, right? Obviously. Let's go next. Um, yeah, we talked about Postman. What's Postman? Obviously, uh, Postman is used by over twenty-five million developers. You know, it's massive. Um, and that's what makes Postman the industry leader when it comes to you know API ecosystem. Um, so you can obviously you know learn more about Postman here. Um, I've already talked about it, so I'm not going to discuss it in much detail. uh by the way postman has a very simple vision right so our vision is to have a world where there are 100 million connected developers through apis and apis are the center stage they are the primary building blocks in the api first world and for that we have three vision statement the first one is apis are considered as number one priority APIs are easily consumable and APIs are easily discoverable. So these are the three, uh, you know, main items which we think would create an API first world. And our CEO Abhinav, uh, you know, has contributed to this amazing novel, uh, which you can go ahead and read and learn more about the API first world. Uh, we all loved novels when we were, you know, very young. Uh, and my i was personally interested in the photos right uh, and you'll definitely find amazing graphics in it so definitely you know read it out if you have free time later on let's go next okay we also have to sign up on postman if you if you don't have an account yet on postman then we can sign up very quickly uh, but if you already have an account then you don't need to sign up and create a new account because we will be using the postman account which you already have um so yeah let's go ahead and sign up for postman so go to postman.com you can actually see the link is added here uh, you can open that new link in the new tab um and it is looking like this so we have to sign up for free click on top right sign up for free here you can see the button top right sign up for free click on it um and it will open a page like this right so enter the email enter your email oops not gmail uh yeah you you will have a gmail i don't have a gmail i'll use my work email um add your username obviously it's a unique username so i'll recommend that you use your first half of your email because unless you will not find anything unique i usually use it's ali um mustafa 1 2 3 because i don't find my username very quickly and then i need to use a password okay so here i am going to uh you know use i am not going to use this password because it's a postman account and i don't want you to give any access uh, so i'm going to write another password let me write it okay looks like it should work okay so i will get sign up for product update and i'll click on create account yeah anyway you know google is going to remember that password for me so i don't need to care about it and yeah my account is created yeah save the password okay and then it's ask me for my name so i'm going to write my name as ali mustafa and then it's asking me for my role i am a developer advocate 
Um, so you can see there are multiple roles. Pro I'm an educator as well, so I'll select educator. If you're a student, you can select student, by the way. So I'll select educator, I'll click continue. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm signed in with the product. I don't want to sign anything. Click on skip, skip, directly skip. Whatever you see, you know, if you see a button for skip, skip it. You don't need to do anything, right? You can just skip it, right? Uh, so yeah, it redirected to my workspace. Okay, this is amazing. Uh, so you, you see how easy it is to sign up, right? Oh, uh, should I show it again? Okay, I, I cannot sign up again, folks, but yeah, you know, you get the point. So open this and click on sign up and quickly sign up. Yeah. Um, yeah, quickly do that. Give me a thumbs up in the chat once you're done. Yeah, it's very easy, by the way. Uh, and then you can also install Postman agent. Well, we will not need it uh, because, you know, I'm here to kind of solve your doubts and we can actually do everything together without the need to installing agent. But if you face errors multiple times, uh, then please install the agent, uh, which will help you to kind of overcome your browser's limitations. OK, um, so yeah, so you can see this is how it looks like. OK, I'll, I'll wait for a minute more uh, so that you folks can actually create the account and then we will move further. OK. So yeah, give me a thumbs up folks in the chat if you're done already. I'll, I need to see a lot more thumbs ups or orange heart or you can give me the orange fruit emoji. I don't mind, you know, I'll take whatever you give me. So yeah, spam that in the chat um, if you have already done. If not, please do it quickly folks because we are running out of time for today um, and we need to at least complete till, till where? Till add a book. Okay, I need to complete till add a book at least, right? So that I can, uh, you know, continue from there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or else if we are fortunate enough, we need to go to halfway test. But that's like, you know, far away. We are very far away. Um, but let's try. Let's try to at least do the, you know, add a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Let's try that. Okay. Quick, quick, quick. Okay, uh, yeah, folks, I cannot show you again because I'm already logged in, right? Um, but you can just rewind a little bit, by the way. You know, YouTube has this amazing feature where even if you're live, you can go back and watch the video again, you know? Um, just saying, and this is recorded, meaning that you can watch it later again, you know? Mm, yeah, <laughs> um, so don't worry about it, folks. Okay. Um, so now that it is added, uh, let's go ahead and it is quiz time. I mean, if you love quizzes, I love quizzes personally. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this quiz. Um, Postman has a vision for API first world in the API first world. Okay. This is a multiple choice question. There's only one question. So let's take some time to answer it. APIs are considered as number one priority. APIs will make you famous on TikTok. APIs are easily consumable. API stands for Application Postman Interface. APIs are easily discoverable. Give me answers in ABCD box or one, two, three, four, whatever works for you. Um, I am looking at the chat for these answers. Let's see who gets it right. We just learned about this like two slides back. So yeah <laughs> okay mm, yes obviously a yeah a lot of you have mentioned a c and e which is right okay um don't you think apis will make you famous on tiktok with my kind of humor you know uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, it will not because TikTok is banned in India, you know, number one. So maybe Reels, you know, yeah, it will make me famous on Reels. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a Reels account. I'm not famous yet. Don't worry. Uh, but definitely, you know, with my kind of humor, I'll definitely get famous one day. Okay. 
So let's hit submit um, and let's see if the answer is right. Yeah, we scored 100 marks again. That's good. Um, by the way, you can click on show answers and it will show you the correct answer. You know, it's not a, so quiz is not a test, okay? It's more like, you know, rewind your knowledge and, you know, just do a quick check and it's not a test. Understand that. If you, if you get wrong, you can click on show answers and you will see the answers, okay? Because we are doing practical and practical is your test, nothing else, okay? Awesome. Let's click on next. Cool. So now we need to, obviously, you are a librarian, okay? So what are the things you need to do? There's a new book in the market. You need to create a book. Someone comes and asks you, hey, what are the books you have? You need to retrieve a book. Which method? Mm -hmm. Get method. Exactly. Then, you know, there's an update in a book. Title changed. Author changed. Which method? Update. Or someone came to check out the book. Update, right? Um, and then the book got outdated. Syllabus change. Delete, right? So you need to have a workspace which has all these methods so that you can use again and again, right? So what is a workspace? A workspace in a very simple way is a way for you to collaborate, okay? So your whole idea is that the workspace will contain multiple APIs, multiple collections, um, and multiple details, you know, uh, according to your project. And you can have multiple workspaces to organize and, you know, walk around with things. Okay. I usually prefer to have multiple workspaces with multiple collections uh, to kind of, you know, serve my purpose for each project. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new workspace. And this time we are going to name our workspace as Postman API Fundamental Student Expert. Now, if you don't want to type all of that, I can do the rescue. You can see the link here. You can actually see Postman API Fundamental Expert here. Just copy it. Come back here. Oh, sorry. Come back here and go here. Click on Workspaces and click on this Create Workspace on the left-hand side. Again, I'll show you on the left-hand side, on the very top, Click on this drop down workspaces and click on create workspace. Okay. So once you hit that, it is going to obviously, you know, show you an option to create a blank workspace. We want to create a blank workspace and then click on next. And then it will ask you for the name. So let's name it what? Let's name it Postman API Fundamentals Student Expert. But if every one of us will name the same workspace, then it will not work. So go ahead and add your name to it so that it differentiates. <laughs> um, but you can actually create with the same name because, you know, that's your workspace. But I usually prefer to, you know, leave my mark somewhere. <laughs> okay. Um, what are we doing here? Uh, learning about APIs in public, right? Obviously. Uh, and what kind of workspace is this? Uh, this is, you can select the visibility of this workspace. We are going to select public because there's nothing to hide and we want everyone to see what we are learning about APIs. Uh, so we are going to select uh, that option. Uh, and then we are going to hit create. Okay, so that is going to create this workspace for us. I hope it is very simple process. Uh, and I hope you are able to do that as well. Okay. Um, easy, easy. So now workspace is created. We are inside the workspace. Now for people who missed it, don't worry. I'll show you again. So what did we do? We wanted to create a workspace to organize our APIs. So we scroll down a little bit on this workspace page. We copied the name of the workspace. Let's go and copy her. By the way, all instructions with screenshots is given here, okay? So if you miss it, you can read it a little. I know reading is not one of our engineering students, you know, best task. But yeah, please do some reading. <laughs> uh, come here in workspaces on the top left. Drop down, click on create workspace. Click on blank workspace. Click on next. Add the name as we copied from there. And then in the addition to the name we copied, add your mark. 
you know so you can add your mark like i add my name or you can write your initials which is also fine add the summary learning about apis and in the access segment add public so that everyone can view it and then hit create button it will create the workspace and will redirect you to that workspace i hope this is pretty much clear give me a thumbs up in the chat if you are done already till here let me see some thumbs up in the chat yes yes thumbs up in the chat folks that's good that's good okay um awesome i'll switch to my workspace which i created earlier because i don't want to create multiple workspaces okay um so this is amazing i have already created the workspace uh, and it is empty so let's go ahead and uh, you know fill it up so let's go to next task one is done successfully let's go to task number two so task number two is to kind of create a collection. The collection will have all my APIs together in it. Uh, so it will act as a folder in which I have all my APIs and directly uh, inside of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, you know, add the collection. Um, so you can actually add it via that plus icon on the top left, or you can go and uh, create it from the menu as well. Um, the name of the collection is going to be Postman Library API V2. You can still copy it. Or if you want to type it, go ahead and type it. No one is stopping you. Uh, so let's come back to Postman. And on the top left, again, I'm going to show you here. There are two ways you can click on this new icon, a uh, new button, or you can click on this plus icon. We'll use the shortcut. We'll click on this plus icon. And you can see it tells us to create either from a template or blank. We are going to choose blank. And we are going to name it as Postman API Library, um, you know, Postman Library API V2. Let's rename it using Enter. And now we have a collection for ourselves. Again, let me show it to people who have, uh, you know, who did not get it. Uh, just for them, I'm going to show it once again. Uh, so you can see there's empty, no collection. So I can click on this plus icon on top left in my workspace, click on this plus icon, and then click on blank collection. Um, and here uh, we are going to rename it to Postman Library API V2, hit enter. And then here we have the collection ready. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I hope everyone has got till here. If you are with me, till here you are doing amazing okay um so yeah today we will try to finish uh you know till here we'll try to do get book by id and from tomorrow from tomorrow we'll add book and we'll continue from that right uh, so that will be like much better for tomorrow uh, so we'll do the scripting part and we'll add book and we'll kind of cater to all of that okay um okay let's go to next and this is our very first practical. We are going to create our very first get request. Awesome. So let's uh, copy the base URL from here uh, so that you know we don't mess up things. So we copy this URL and we are going to create uh, our very first request. So you can see this blue icon which says add a request. So let's go there and click on this blue hyperlink which says add a request. And it will create your very first request. Let's rename it. Huh. So sometimes you can see that uh, the API breaks and it says request not found, which is okay. Don't worry about it uh, because it is, uh, you know, there's, there was some error. Click on add a request again and it will work. Huh. Okay. It says there's an error. Let's refresh this. Sometimes the API breaks. Don't worry, um, just refresh the workspace. It will work like a charm. Uh, see, there's empty. So let's go ahead and create a request, add a request. 
Yeah, works. Okay. <laughs> let's uh let's go ahead and name it get books. What we are going to name it? We are going to name it get books, right? Uh, by the way, you can also see the name here. You can see get books. Uh, doesn't matter if it's small case or big case. Um, doesn't really matter. Just name it get books. Okay. Uh, and then this is the URL which we are going to use. So without get, just copy the URL from H. HTTPS to books forward slash books. Copy the URL and paste it here. Right. The URL should look exactly like this. Okay. Once you paste it, please remember to save it using control S. Save it using control S. Save it before you send it. Always save your request because if you don't save it at the end, you will fail test. Yes, the test is not the quiz. This is all part of the test. So whatever practical you are doing, we'll be testing it via an API call at the end. Okay. So yeah, please do all of this. Okay. With me. Um, so I send the request and I can see it says 200 meaning what meaning 200 meaning success, success. Yes. Success. Okay. Awesome. Um, so you can see I received a bunch of responses, which is amazing. Okay. And the response is 151 KB, which is also amazing. Okay. So the first request is successful. Everyone got 200. Uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat if you got 200. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, yeah, please give me a thumbs up if you already succeeded and got 200. Yeah, some people copy the enter also. So uh, very common mistake, which a lot of you do, is they also copy this, you know, enter, like new line which is um, which actually creates a problem because then once you paste it it will actually look like this uh, you know which is like a new line and it will give you an error so that's why it's essential that you just copy till the url till the s and hit enter and make sure that you save the request before you move to the next one cool so first request sent we just we send the request we receive the response by the way, we talked about the method, right? It's easy. Yes, absolutely easy. Uh, by the way, I told you about put and patch, right? Uh, so we'll actually go and talk about put and patch a lot more detail when we are updating um, and checking out our book. Uh, so at that time, we are going to kind of do that uh, in very much detail. Okay. Uh, by the way, all of this is explained. But status code, I did not explain, right? So there are different types of status codes, which we need to remember. Don't worry, Postman remembers it for us, but we need to know it for our personal knowledge. And by the way, I hope you are participating in the social media challenge already. If not yet, you still have chance uh, to participate in it. So yeah, make sure uh, you are reading it and participating in it. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's come back here. Uh, so there are different code ranges like 100 is information, 200 is success. 300 family redirection, 400 family client error, and 500 family server error. You can see some example here. For example, 200 is okay, meaning that everything worked well. Again, 200 means success. So any 200 family will mean success, but it has a different meaning. For example, 201 created, 204 no content, but it is done. Like you, whatever you are trying to do, it has accomplished. Okay. Uh, 301 is redirection in Hindi. I popularly say, Iski topi uske sar. you know, it's very um, easy way of telling it. Uh, but yeah, it basically changed the path. 400 is user error. You did error, not the server. So 404 is your error. Server is there. Okay. Server did everything right. It is your error. So 400 bad request, 401, 403, 404 is your error, not server's error. 500 is server error, meaning that, you know, server is uh, not responding properly. So 502 is, uh, 500 is something which happens a lot of times, like 500 internal server error. Um, you know, when I'm coding, 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 and I get tons of error, 500 internal server error, you know, a server error. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, you cannot do anything when server error is there because you're not managing the API. So you technically can't do anything. 
uh, most of the times the server have an uh, error happens, uh, you know, if the request is maybe crazily designed or if the server is crazily designed, right? Um, so yeah, let's go next. We already talked about request response pattern, so we are not going to talk about it again. Quiz time. Again, 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 we are going to do a simple quiz. Um, so let's go ahead and do this quiz. Uh, two questions. Okay. You are given three blocks of text. Um, each block is a part of request URL. Which of the answer choices list these parts in the correct order? A little difficult, a little confusing, but I trust you folks to get the right answer. So tell me. Which is the right answer? Yeah, I, I see some questions, but I'm going to answer them. So we we will have a Q&A round probably at the end of day two. Uh, actually, you want to cover a lot of portion, right? So unless, uh, you know, you have anything uh, which is related here, I'm going to answer it in the chat as well. Uh, but live, I'm not taking any questions. I'm going to answer it via chat. Don't worry. I have my team also, which will answer it. And let's have great team is also going to answer it. Um, so yeah, you know, if you have questions coming in, I don't, uh, don't think that we are neglecting it. Uh, we will be answering it. Okay. Uh, it's just that I'm not answering it live, uh, you know, to save time. Okay. Um, so which is the answer folks? Come on, tell me ABCD. Where's ABCD? I don't see ABCD. Okay. A, B, C or D. Mm -hmm. Yes, D exactly. Folks, you why so come so much confusion? Okay, a lot of you answered it right, but still. Next question. You are given a set of table. Okay, 200, 300, 400, 500. And ah, this is a classic question. Okay, I'll give you a moment to. Yeah. You know, I get confused sometimes. I'm not going to blame you if you get that wrong. But yeah, <laughs> show me the right answer. Tell me the right answer. A, B, C, D. Yes, yes, yes. A little tricky. But I guess option number three gets eliminated right away because 200 is not server error for sure. Right? Yes. Which one, which one? Last one is the answer. Yes, exactly. Let's hit submit quiz. Yay, 100 on 100. See, it's a piece of cake for me. I get 100 on 100 every time. Uh, I hope I got these traits 100% in all my semester. But I did not. <laughs> okay, let's go next. Okay, so this is the last segment I'm going to cover for today. Um, and then obviously we are going to cover till get book by ID and then we'll start tomorrow from add a book because that will be easy for tomorrow. Okay. So the very first thing I need to do is create a variable, which is called as base URL. Why we are creating a variable. So creating variables has multiple benefits. Actually, I'm going to talk about it, um, you know, a lot in the next chapter as well, but to give you context, the whole idea of creating a variable is to not repeat ourselves again and again. So remember the URL, we are going to use that URL, the same URL again and again, right? So why not create a variable of it and reuse that? Good plan. So that's why we are using variables. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a variable and name it base URL. Okay. Remember the name should be exactly this. Base U capital RL. Okay. Base URL. Let's do that. How do you do that? Let me show you. Look at the window now and you can go ahead and create it later. Okay. So look at what I'm doing right now so that it is very important so that you don't miss it. Okay. Everyone attention here. So I'm going to start selecting from M and select all the way till H and leave my cursor. And I'll see this pop up called as set as variable. Simple. Let me show you again. I'll start selecting from M. Select all the way till H. Leave the cursor and I'll see this set as variable pop up. 
I'm going to click on it. And obviously there's no variables available. So I'm going to click on set as a new variable. I'll name it base. Remember U capital RL. The value is going to be the same. Obviously the scope is going to be collection level. If you don't believe me, read Academy, you can see collection level. Okay. Let's select collection level. Click on set variable. Click on this button. Once done, give me a thumbs up. Again, for people who did not understand, I'll show it once more. Okay. Select from M. Select from M all the way till H. Click on set variable. Click on set as a new variable. Name it base URL. Select the scope as collection level and click on set variable. You can see the variable is set, set, set. But what we need to do next, we need to save it, save it. Else that is a problem, right? You know, it will not work. Click on send. And it works exactly as it is. Exactly as it is. Okay. Nothing changes. It's just that now we can use base URL as a variable everywhere else. Now you'll be like, oh, sorry, I committed a mistake. I added an extra slash. What should I do? No worries. Click on the collection name and you can see the variables here. You can edit the variables as you want the values. No problem at all. But make sure you edit in initial and current both and save it before moving anywhere else. By the way, this is right value. So I'm, I'm not going to edit it, but I'm showing you how you can edit it. You can create more variables via UI here also. Sounds good. Awesome. Um, so this looks good. Um, let's save this. Okay, already saved. Awesome. Let's go back to next. Okay. Now, uh, obviously not every time you're going to fetch all the books, which is useless, right? So we are going to fetch only some books uh, which meet specific conditions. So we can do that via query params. Query params allow you to add a key and a value and filter the results on the fly. So you're not requesting all the information from the server. You're only requesting information uh, which you need from the server. Okay. Uh, so for example, here you can see that we are, uh, you know, kind of directly, uh, you know, calling some API and we are seeing that photo orientation equal to the landscape. So we are mentioning in our requirement itself that, hey, this particular parameter should be this in your response. Okay. So make sure you process it and give us that. Okay. Uh, so that's a very simple example. Let's go ahead and execute that. So for that, we'll have to create a new request, right? Obviously, now, by the way, you can also read the documentation, but don't worry. I am the documentation for you for both the days. But if you want to go ahead and read the documentation as well. Okay. Uh, so now we need to go ahead and we need to create a new request called as fiction books because we want to have the genre fiction. We want to retrieve the books in the fiction genre. So let's go back here. Now, see, the good part about Postman is that you can copy. <laughs> I don't mean copy, meaning, you know, copy, copy, but you can copy this request and create a new request instead of writing all of that from scratch. So let's click on these three dots. Let's click on in the get books, hover over it and click on these three dots and click on duplicate. That will duplicate this request, but please rename it because I, I don't like this copy. So rename it to get uh, fiction box looks good but what will change the request is same now what will change yes yes we are going to filter it so in the key in the query param in the key type genre by the way if you don't remember the spelling you can obviously come here which i don't you know i'm going to be very honest with you <laughs> but this time i remember it right okay that's good um the value is going to be fiction. Ah, it looks good. So you can see that automatically it added that in our URL, save it and send it. 
as soon as you send it you can see we received 200 okay meaning our request was successful and we received the data which was 97 kb remember earlier how much kb we received the data go to get books and see we received 151 kb data so you see it reduced half in size why because we selected the category as fiction so obviously non-fiction books are not returning so the size is reduced see the logic very simple yeah it is very simple logic um so yeah get books get fiction books um both the request executed successfully uh give me a thumbs up in the chat again if you have not done it till here i'm going to show it to you once again how it looks like um just for people once again i'm going to show it okay so we had get books now we need to do get fiction books so first thing we are going to go click on these three dots on get books and create a duplicate of this after creating duplicate first we need to rename it so we are going to rename it uh, get fiction books now we need to add the filter else nothing else changes right so if you send this request again you can see that it will show me how many kb it will show me like 151 don't don't worry yeah. if you if you get other response here don't freak out like yeah it's totally fine uh, you know you you all will not get exact kb in return sometimes you'll get more sometimes you'll get less that uh, depends on the server someone in the other part of the world might be adding one more you know api uh, like post method here as we are learning so it might be changing okay so don't worry if it shows you different uh, kb size okay so let's add filter so we are going to add genre okay and the value is going to be fiction if you don't remember all these you can come here and obviously look here you can see genre and fiction okay let's go here and uh, hit save always hit save first and then hit send and you can see it reduced to 97 kb which is almost half of it which is good and we are only able to see books which has fiction category yes 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 so you can see all the fiction category books we can uh kind of see here which is good right exactly good okay so this is done this is done okay amazing now you can can you add multiple query params absolutely yes you can add multiple query params uh, so for example we also want to add another param called as checked out absolutely we can do that because uh you know that will help me uh to only get books which are available so check out equal to false meaning that books which are available will only be shown okay so let's go here add checked out you can type true if you want only the books which are taken away and false if you want to list all the books which are not taken away sent and you can see it returns exactly like almost the same return let's change it to true and see the response if it changes yeah, so you can see that now it's only one KB return, right? So there are only few books which are checked out, else almost all the books are available. So there are two books. Uh, there's ABC, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, these are the books which are checked out through. So change it to false and again, see it for yourself. 96 KB, right? So yeah, obviously a lot of books are available. Click on save and you're good. So yeah, this is how you can add multiple query params as well. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. Okay, so like query params, uh, yeah, I'll give you one minute to complete it. Uh, and then I'll start with the very last segment for today. I know I've taken quite a time, uh, but you know, it is time consuming folks. Um, but we love the theory and the quizzes, right? You know? Yeah, and with my humor, definitely yes. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, I'll give you a moment and then we'll wrap up. Last, last, I promise, last item. Okay, nothing else. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow we'll start from here. Don't worry. Okay, done, done. Yeah, I see a lot of thumbs up. So let's get started. Okay. Um, repeat, folks, please <laughs> use YouTube feature because, uh, you know, I have already explained it two times, right? Uh, so yeah, multiple params. Uh, again, just added one more param down below. Nothing else. Okay. Or you can just watch the academy as well. Okay. Awesome. Um, so path variables. Path variables are a little different. The only, you know, difference is that in query params, we have key and value. In part params, we don't have key. We only have value. So, for example, GitHub API. It doesn't have key. It directly says users and then user ID, nothing else. Like no key value pair, no question mark, directly value. Uh, again, they both have different approaches and different use cases. Uh, you can actually see it here. We have mentioned here also. Uh, so you can read about it. But yeah, uh, pretty much whenever you are uh, going and you are getting, you know, you're directly working with ID users, uh, we use path params, uh, you know, most likely. Uh, but in case you are using, uh, you know, uh, like you, you want to use key value pair, that is also something which you can uh, kind of do. But this is very defined key value pair. Like it has to be exactly that, else it will not accept it. Um, in path variable, it's not like that. Uh, it, it also accepts dynamic value without any problem. Okay. So structure is not something uh, which is like, uh, you know, given a heavy, um, you know, uh, like it, it does not have any weightage. So, yeah. Uh, so let's go and try out that. Yeah. Because uh, we want to, uh, you know, uh, kind of do that uh, very, very easily. So we want to get one specific book. In that case, we need to note down the idea of that book. So someone is coming to you and is asking for a particular book again and again. So in that case, uh, you can note down the idea of that book and then fetch it directly, right? Uh, very, very easy instead of, you know, searching and doing all of that, right? Um, so let's go ahead and create a new a new uh, request. So here, so we have learned how to duplicate it, but you have not learned how to create a new request, right? So let's do that. Go to Postman Library API V2, hover over it, click on these three dots and click on new request. Once you add a new request, um, you can obviously go here and rename it. Ah, uh, again, error. Okay. In that case, you know what to do. What to do? Refresh the window. Make sure you save everything before refreshing. Okay. Else you will <laughs> lose data. So again, let's go to these three dots. Let's click on add request. Name it, get books by ID. Okay. Now do I need to type the whole URL? Absolutely not. Why? Because I can use BS URL variable forward slash books. Now watch carefully what I'm doing. I'm adding a forward slash. I'm adding colon and id so as soon as i do that i can see path variables added it was hidden before right so postman still allows you to use path variables as a query key value pair which is amazing because uh, you know though the functionality is different um you know it looks like it is a key value pair okay so i can go and add the value here so let's copy the value uh, which we saw earlier. So let's uh, go here and copy this, um, you know, ID value, you know, which we want to use. So let's copy this value from here and paste it in the value. Save and send. Save please first and then send. And you can see 200 okay. And I can actually uh, see the outcome of that particular book, uh, which, uh, you know, a lot of people were asking about, right? So I can change it to another ID. So let's say I change it to 10. Um, will I get a response? Absolutely no, because the book does not exist. So you can see internal server error because the limit, oh yeah, it hit the limit, right? So if I remove one letter, uh, let's send again. 
it says book with the id not found yeah not found but if i go with that uh, previous book it will actually work let's see yeah it works 200 okay okay so i have saved this request and yeah that's the last request for today uh, so I hope uh, you get all the points and you were able to do that final quiz before we wrap up. But yeah, give me a thumbs up in the chat if you have already done this. I hope it was very easy. So what I did was basically I'll show you again, uh, just in case for everyone to be on the same page, right? I don't want anyone to you know be on a different page. So what I did, I went ahead, over over these three dots, click on add a request. Um, and then I'll name it get books by ID. And here uh, I'm adding uh, the URL as base URL forward slash books forward slash zoom in a little bit and I'll show you the magic. So you can see only there is query params, right? Nothing else below that. But I'm going to add colon and ID. And boom, we have path variables, right? So Postman makes it easy for you to use path variables as key value pairs. Um, again, it's all internal. It doesn't reflect in the API. Uh, actually, you can see that via console, but yeah, we'll actually go here and add the value of the book, which we were searching as a librarian. Save it, send it, works like a charm, right? Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Let's click on next. And attempt the quiz. Three questions this time. What type of ID below? What type of parameters ID below? A or B? Quick, 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 folks. Yes. Yeah, exactly, B, not A. <laughs> okay. How many query params are present in there? Ah, this is going to be a lit little tough not a lot but a little tough yeah option tell me option a b c d okay don't tell me one two three four because then you know i don't know c c c yes exactly let's go next um okay mm -hmm. how many path params this is interesting. Zero or one? I'll say zero. Let's hit submit. Yeah, I got three on three. That is amazing. Last one, you know, some people got it wrong. And some obviously got it right. But yeah. So yeah, that's about it. That's for it today, folks. Okay. And then tomorrow we are going to start from ad book. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, coming back to here. I hope you enjoyed whatever we learned today. Please go ahead and participate in the social media challenge. If you have not, you can rewind, take a screenshot. Don't worry. Uh, make it informative for others, right? If others are looking at it, you know, make it worthwhile for them to read your tweet, right? Um, and hit submit. And obviously, you will get some chance to win some awesome swags, uh, you know, uh, as a part of the giveaway. I'll announce the winners tomorrow on the stream. Um, actually, it will be added here. Um, you know, I might not be able to obviously announce it, announce it because, uh, you know, so many, we have to complete a lot of syllabus, but I'll definitely add it here. Okay. I'll add it just below this. I'll just remove all of this tomorrow and I'll add the winners here. Okay. So you can actually go click it and you can actually see all the winners. Uh, so yeah, uh, participate in it uh, and you will get a chance to meet, uh, you know, uh, like um, win amazing swags. One more important stuff, uh, join the Discord server. Um, so why do you need to join the Discord server? So you can actually come here and look at this URL to join the Discord server. Why it's important? Because Discord server has a dedicated channel for Let's Upgrade. Let me show you. Okay. So I already am part of uh, Discord, by the way. Uh, continue to Discord. So you can see I'm already part of the Discord server. Like I'm the creator of this Discord server, by the way. So you can actually see all the, all the items here. Uh, and we have a dedicated, we have actually a dedicated helpline for Let's Upgrade folks. So you can see Let's Upgrade SE. 
we have a dedicated uh, you know people here who will help you okay so yeah if you are um, you know coming from let's upgrade bootcamp which you are uh, please join the discord server and we are going to we are you know going to be very happy to help you out there in case you're stuck for today anywhere tomorrow we are going to start from there uh, so yeah uh, see you tomorrow uh, exactly at the same time on this stream right here uh, feel free to connect with me in case you want to and uh, that's a wrap for today uh, and we'll do a quick recap before we wind up so what did we learn about today we learned about methods exactly urls request params um better example obviously we did three requests hands-on completely ourselves amazing your pat on your back right obviously uh you did all of that by yourself again um yeah so we did all of that uh you know uh amazingly uh and remember certificate is not completed yet this is just the start tomorrow we'll complete the certification you and me together okay um so yeah that is good uh thank you so much for joining in today folks um and yeah i hope to see you tomorrow in the same numbers as today so that we can complete uh the certification to get um bye bye and see you tomorrow at this same time